Hey guys, hope you well. So I'm quite excited for this lesson because if you just look at that table, I know you've seen a table like this in class. Pretty intimidating, right? Learners don't enjoy it at all, but I'm gonna show you that this table is amazing. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make use of this table. And then we'll go through a whole bunch of examples where I will help you to understand this table much better. Okay, so what we, did that sound right? We're gonna make it much better. Yeah, that does sound right, sounded a bit weird. Anyways, so what we're gonna quickly talk about is um, solubility, which is something we have looked at in the previous lessons. But pretty much this chapter is all about ionic uh, substances. Okay, whoa, Kev, what's going on there? Ionic substances. So we said that ionic substances have positive things called cations connected to negative things called anions, and it just forms this big giant, or let's just call it a big um, crystal lattice. Okay, let's just go there, 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 there. And then what we said was that water plays a huge role in this chapter. Now, we learned in the previous, one of the previous lessons was that water um, has a slightly, the hydrogen areas are slightly positive, and then the oxygens are slightly negative. And I said that in grade 11, they'll go in that with, they'll go into that with more detail. Um, but this little thing here just means, you can just think of that meaning a little bit. It just means a little bit. So this is a little bit negative, little bit positive, little bit positive. And then we realized um, that, well, we know that there would be millions and millions and trillions and gazillions of water molecules, okay? So there's loads of water molecules. Now, what happens is that the positive or the negative, or yeah, let's start with the positive. The positive hydrogens, they would be attracted towards the negatives because opposites attract. So that's negative and those are positive, okay? And then the negative oxygen parts or well, they would be attracted to the cations, which are positive, okay? Because the oxygen parts are negative, and then the hydrogen parts, like we said, are positive. But now this happens millions and millions and gazillions of times, and what happens is that for some ionic substances, these water molecules will actually be able to pull these ions apart. Okay, because remember, in between these ions, there are positive, I mean, there are, um, there, there's positives and negatives, and we can see that they are all attracting each other with an ionic bond, okay? So there are ionic bonds over here. Now, so let's just write that down. There are ionic bonds between the ions. Okay, but then there's also, um, these water molecules are also attracting these ions over here. So we also have the water molecules exerting an attractive force on the ions. But now, um, ionic bonds are very strong. These are very strong, whereas these these forces over here um, are very weak. But there are so many water molecules. There are trillions and huge numbers of water molecules. So what happens is that if the water molecules, because there's so many of them, if they can be stronger than these forces over here, then what would happen? Well, what would happen is that these ions would actually be pulled apart and you wouldn't have this anymore, what you would then have would be individual ions floating around like that. So you would be able to pull the water, I mean, you'd be able to pull these ions apart. Now here's, here's the key. If you can pull the ions apart, then that ionic substance is soluble, okay? So if the ions can be pulled apart, well, we call that dissolving, by the way. We've learned about that in the pre one of the previous lessons we recently did. That's called dissolving. And if the ions can be pulled apart, then we say that the, well, then the ionic substance is soluble. 
Okay, but sometimes these forces over here, the ones that are in between the ions, are so strong that no matter how much water you use, you just cannot pull it apart. If you cannot pull it apart, then this will remain as a solid, and we call that solid a precipitate, okay? So let's just write that down quickly. If the ionic substance cannot be pulled apart, then it remains as a solid called a precipitate. Okay, now Kevin, how am I supposed to know which ionic substances are going to be pulled apart, meaning that they're soluble, and which ones are going to be remaining as a precipitate, meaning that they are insoluble, insoluble. Well, it just so happens that there is a table that is going to help us to be able to do this very easily, okay? Now, this table might not look the same as the table that your teacher is showing you or the table that you see in your textbook. I wish there was just one text, I mean one um, table, but there actually isn't. So does that mean you need to be panicking right now? No, because I've been doing this for so long, I know what's important, and I'm 99% confident to tell you that these are pretty much the ones that you really need to, um, that you're gonna be using quite a lot. Now, most schools are actually, they're not gonna make you memorize this. Many schools are actually gonna give you a table in your exam, but please don't mark my words on that because some schools might make you memorize, okay? So, um, but, but most schools are actually gonna give you a table in the exam. So what I'm gonna teach you to do in this lesson is how to use this table because right now I know that this table looks really weird, right? Okay, so let's start slowly and then we'll do a whole bunch of examples where we will practice using the table. So let's start off with um, soluble. Soluble means that the ions can pull apart, okay? Remember, if the ions can be pulled apart, then it's dissolved and then it's soluble. That's when it breaks apart. Okay, and then if the ions cannot be broken apart, then we form a precipitate, and so that would be this part. Okay, so let me show you an example. They are saying that all of these things are soluble. So they're saying that if you combine anything, if you combine it with Na, so let's say you combine Na with Cl, then it says that anything combined with Na is soluble, so the ions can be pulled apart, okay? Anything combined with K, so maybe you have KCl, then that can be pulled apart. Anything combined with NH4, like NH4Cl, can be pulled apart, and there are no exceptions, so you don't need to worry about anything like an exception, okay? But now let's look at this one. So it says that anything combined with, for example, Cl, is soluble. So for example, uh, MgCl, okay? Don't worry about where I got the two from. Just know that anything combined with Cl minus is soluble. So this would be soluble, okay? But what if it says here that there are some exceptions? So these are some things that you need to um, be careful of. So let's say that they said anything combined with Cl is soluble. So for example, um, LiCl, lithium chloride, that is soluble. This would be this this would um, be able to be pulled apart by water, but if you say, for example, AgCl, AgCl, well, this would actually form a precipitate. That would form a precipitate. Um, cannot be pulled apart because it says that anything combined with Cl is soluble, except except with Ag plus, or accept that, or accept that, okay? You understanding it a little bit? I hope so. So um, let's say, for example, um, they say that anything soluble, uh, anything combined with NO3, so let's say you had KNO3, 
Okay, are there any exceptions? No, so this is soluble. That's soluble. So um, that means can be pulled apart by water. Um, let's look at, and then we're gonna go do some examples just now, guys, where you're gonna tell me, um, or you're gonna try to see if you understand the answer. So um, they can't tell you, Kevin, it's a video. And so let's say, for example, it says that anything combined with sulfate, but let's use barium sulfate, okay? So they said anything combined with SO4 is soluble, except, except if it's one of these. So look here, I've just used barium Ah, so that means that this would actually form, this would actually be insoluble. It would actually form a precipitate, which actually just means that water cannot pull this apart. Okay, uh, let's look at this. Here are all the things that are insoluble. So it says that anything that is combined with CO3, so that means anything combined with CO3 is insoluble. For example, magnesium carbonate would be insoluble. But Kevin, what about the exceptions? Oh yes, I forgot. It says, except NH4 and any alkali metals. The alkali metals are in the first group on the periodic table, which is this column over here. But magnesium is not in the first group. Magnesium is over here. And so here they said that, whoopsie, here they said that anything combined with CO3 is insoluble, except if it's anything from the first group. But this is not from the first group, so this is still going to be insoluble. Okay, so I think you're probably having a better idea of how this works now. So let's go do some examples. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna, I don't know, I guess pause the video, and you're gonna try to figure out if that thing over there is soluble or insoluble. All right, have fun, because once you start understanding this, you're gonna have a huge smile on your face because you're gonna realize how easy this table actually is. So. They said anything, okay, so it's N-A-C-L, but now they said that soluble, remember soluble means that um, can, can be pulled apart, okay? And then this one means it forms a precipitate. So um, cannot, can't be pulled apart. Okay, so let's look at NaCl. So we said, they said that anything combined with Na, which is this one, um, is soluble. And there's no exceptions to the rule. So that means that this thing over here is soluble. So it can be pulled apart. So that means that if you put NaCl in water, um, if you put NaCl in water, you're gonna see Na pluses and Cl minuses floating around, okay? They're not gonna be stuck together in a crystal lattice. So it can be pulled apart. Or you can even say that it can dissolve, okay? It can dissolve. Now remember, when I say that it can be pulled apart, um, if I had to quickly show you this screen over here, this means precipitate. This is precipitate. Uh, cannot be pulled apart, and we also say insoluble, insoluble. Whereas this one is um, soluble, so can be pulled apart, okay? And so for NaCl, it was this one, where they can be pulled apart, because it is um, soluble. Okay, let's move on to this one now. So you can try this one. So it says that um, anything combined with Cl minus, so there's Cl, anything combined with that is soluble, except if it's Ag plus, and there we have Ag. So that means that this thing is actually insoluble. Insoluble. So it means that it cannot be pulled apart, and so it means that it forms a precipitate. So if you had to look at it, it cannot be pulled apart, and so it would be this one over here. This would be AgCl, okay? It cannot be pulled apart into um, individual ions. Here's our next example. So the first thing I see is a carbonate, okay? Now carbonate is over here. Now they tell us that 
um, anything combined with anything combined with CO3 is insoluble except if it's this or any metal from group one. But if you look at Mg, which is magnesium, it's over here. So that's in group two. Remember group one, group two, group three, group four, like that. So Mg is in group two. So they said that anything combined with CO3 is insoluble, except if there's something from group one or that. But Mg is not from group one, so this exception doesn't work. So that means that this substance is insoluble, which means it's a precipitate makes a precipitate and in the future lessons we're going to go over more about precipitate and we're going to look at precipitation reactions okay so cannot be pulled apart okay here's another one so this one so here we know that um, this is sodium so anything combined with Na is soluble and there is no exception to the rule so this thing should be soluble but now some of you are probably like, yeah, but Kevin, 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 my bro, my home dog. What about here? It says anything combined with CO3 is supposed to be insoluble. Okay, I hear you, but the exception is anything like NH4 or anything in the first group. And Na is in the first group on the periodic table. I'm not going to go grab the periodic table again now, but you probably have one there with you. If you look in the first group, um, Na is part of the first group. So that's so it said that anything with CO3 is insoluble except if you have something in the first group. And so that also tells us that it's soluble. And then also if you look at this one, it says that there's no exceptions of here. So this substance is soluble. Um, that means that the ions or the, 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 the ions can be pulled apart. Okay. So it can be dissolved. It can be dissolved. Let's have a look at this one. So this one says um, anything combined with Na, potassium or NH4 is soluble and there is no exception. So that means that this is soluble. And even if you had to look at this part, it says anything combined with NO3 is soluble. Okay. Okay, here we have a sulfate, so sulfate is over here. Now it says that anything combined with a sulfate is soluble, except if you have SR, BA, or PB. So here we have BA, and so that means that this thing is insoluble, which means that it cannot dissolve, it cannot be pulled apart. So here we have NH4CO3. So NH4, they tell us that anything combined with um, NaK or NO4 is soluble and there are no exceptions. So this must be soluble. Now you might say, yeah, but Kevin, it says here that anything combined with CO3, which is what we have, is insoluble. Yes, but if you look at the exceptions, NH4 is an exception. So CO3 is insoluble except when it's with NH4. So this substance is soluble, so it can be pulled apart, or you could say that it can be dissolved. Two more examples. So here we have NaOH. So they say that um, anything combined with Na is soluble, and there is no exception. So this is definitely soluble. You might say, yeah, but Kevin, here it says that anything combined with OH is insoluble, but then if you look at the exceptions, it's NH4 and anything in group one, and this is in group one. So that means this substance is soluble, means that it can be dissolved, means that the ions can be pulled apart. Last example. Um, so it tells us that anything combined with SO4 is soluble, except if it's this, this, or that. But magnesium is not any one of those, so that means this substance is soluble, which means it can be dissolved, which means that the ions can be pulled. Well, let's just say yeah, ions can be pulled apart. Ions can be pulled apart. And there we go. I really hope that you now have a much better understanding of how this table works.